are back on campus, and they're certainly here, and they are lively at UD Arena. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for both of these teams. Let's focus on Davidson. Desmond Watson inserted into the starting lineup four games ago. This is start number five. He's averaging 12 points per game since being put in the starting lineup. Double figures the last three games. Matt McKillop told us today, he said, listen, I, I was just trying to build his confidence up more than anything else. They've lost three straight, so Matt's trying to get over the 500 mark. Meanwhile, Anthony Grant, his team lost a tough one to VCU, and it was a tough one. They had the lead, 30 seconds to play, so he's hoping that his resilient bunch will get back at it today. It unfortunately has to be a learning aspect of this season. You're playing without one of the best backcourts in the Atlantic 10, hopefully getting those two guys back soon, but ultimately you have to learn from how to play against those mistakes and get better. Jenna Reynaud is at center court ready to toss it up. And here we go, the second time in 18 days. The Dayton Flyers and the Wildcats of Davidson. And Davidson gets the basketball to start the game. Foster Lawyer fires for the first time, and it's off the side of the rim. Meningo with the rebound. That's a big deal. They were dominated on the board their last time out. If Davidson can be 50-50 tonight, they're going to be in this ball game. 50-50 rebounding, that's, that's a huge key for the Wildcats. Shot clock is down under 10. Watson to the free throw line. He just chucked it up. Oh, wow. Count the bucket how about that leading high, to his yeah, left high degree of difficulty for watson you talked about him we think he could be the x factor for davidson you know one thing even though that ball doesn't get into the paint it's about two inches away from the paint how emphatic was mm. coach anthony grant and dayton in shoot around this afternoon saying we cannot let davidson's wings and guards get into the paint no paint touches tonight well watson makes the free throw early three nothing lead and we we were told by matt mckill they're going to have some pressure and it's not overwhelming but it overwhelms them there here's the wildcats going to the bucket as huffman he can't get it to go and now Dayton in transition. Kamara looked in for Deron Holmes. They like to do that, go from high to low. Um, Seal working the perimeter. Holmes will then post up after the screen, looking for the basket. Blakeney goes up off the glass, tough shot, rebound Meninga. Just see some legitimate energy on the glass early from the Wildcats. Good sign for Davidson. 3 nothing Davidson on top. Again, they faced each other 18 days ago. Dayton had a big lead, and then Davidson climbed back, tied it up, and Dayton wound up winning it. Shot clock under 10. Watson, good shot big along the baseline. Kicked out of bounds. It's going to remain Davidson ball, but they reset the shot clock to 20 with a kickball. And something to pay attention to, depending on who takes the ball out of bounds, you know which action is going to come. With Huffman taking the ball out of bounds, they're going to try to go inside first. And nothing was there initially. Lots of tough pass. Knocked out of bounds. It's going to be Dayton basketball. Well, that's Kamara getting the deflection yeah. and almost steal. Who's turned himself into not just one of the top defenders in the Atlantic 10. He's become one of the top wing defenders in the country. He had 27 points, 11 rebounds in the game against VCU. Now, he did turn it over nine times, and he needs to tighten that up, too. 18 total turnovers for Dayton as a team against VCU. You saw that early turnover against the Davidson Press. Without the backcourt, Dayton needs to be a little bit more comfortable and patient breaking that pressure. Kamara's double teams. The back in his way in. A nice touch. The ball fake got him that spin. He kind of pushed Lawyer off him enough to give himself a better angle for that baby hook. And keep an eye on uh, Sharp jumps up top. He's running the point with Malachi Smith still injured, but Malachi Smith is in uniform tonight for Dayton. Sharp jumps is not a true point guard. He's what no. we call a point forward, but he's served that role admirably this season, being thrust into it with those two injuries. True freshman, too. Menenga for three. No good. Deadens off the back of the iron. So not a lot of offense to start this game. Look how quickly Holmes gets down the court to get position. He's exhausting to guard because of how hard he runs the floor. Wasn't even a full fast break. Yeah, he's working against Bailey, a freshman, sophomore against the freshman, and off yeah, the class, it's good. Wrong foot, fading away, and it's still so smooth. And a technical foul has been called on the Davidson bench. How about that with 7-13 to play in the first half? 
Coach McKillop puts his hands up so what did I say? Brett Hampton made the call. One of the three officials. Good crew tonight. Pat Driscoll, Brett Hampton. An unsealed goes to the free throw line, 77%. And he connects. There's Coach McKillop at the top of the screen. And I think it's an assistant coach that receives assistant that technical coach, yeah. foul. Yeah. Second technical is good. Yeah, he thought he was only getting one, but he gets two. And now the ball goes to Davidson. And we'll see a little full court pressure for Dayton. Just relaxed. Davidson prepared for that in case Dayton decides to press and turn up the pressure a little bit. Lawyer, he's been uh, roughed up a little bit. They get very physical with him because they know he can score. But that's every game that it's he every faces. Game. And you'll never hear him complain about it. He is one of the best players in the country at moving out the basket. Look at that. that. Is beautiful <laughs> pass. My goodness. And good job by Reed Bailey, the freshman, to recognize that he had to keep his head on the swivel. Hard catch, too. Kind of had to catch it behind him a little bit. One point game. 16.40 to play here in the first half. Blakeney, a little penetration, pulled it back out. Um, Steele feels like he's got a mismatch. This is a good switch by yeah. Davidson. And Kamara can't handle that pass. It's cut off by Meninga on the backside. Huffman snaking up. Goes to Bailey. Down low, double teamed and fouled. Sharp jumps is called for that foul. I think it's a prerequisite if you play at Davidson, you know you're gonna have be playing with great passers. You have to keep your head on a swivel. Was that between the legs? That looked, it looked like, like it was between the legs. Ridiculous <laughs> dive by Foster Lawyer. Everybody's worried about his scoring, but his passing is so unique. Well, he got some freedom there. His second three is no good. Meninga with the rebound, but a foul is called on the floor. I think that's gonna go against Blakeney if it is. Nope, it's not going to be against Blakeney. It's going to go against Deron Holmes, his first. Could have been against Blakeney. That would have been a second. But even though it's early, you and I talked about can Davidson match the physicality of Dayton so far with about five minutes into this game. I think they have. Offensive foul called on Meninga. Little shoulder. And we've reached our first media timeout. Well, 6-5. Dayton's on top by one. We'll take a break and be back. But Davidson's got some work to do right now. Well, I think it's Davidson, VCU, and St. Louis, the top three teams in the Atlantic 10 right now. If we're talking just eye test and obviously record. But St. Louis is a team that's starting to play a little oh, yeah. bit better. They have the best point guard in the country, in my opinion, in Uri Collins. How about this? Malachi Smith is in for the first time in 11 games. He wears number 11 for Dayton. Anthony Grant told us today, we, I want to give him a little bit of a run to see how he is. He goes to the basket, in and out, ball knocked out of bounds. And it'll be Davidson basketball. I think that missed shot is a great sign for him. He gets downhill into the paint. You can see how much the offense flows. He automatically comes in and gets a wide open drive. He's an excellent point guard. And the thing about him is that these ankles have been bugging him for almost a year. And it's been both of them. Right ankle, left ankle, right ankle, left ankle. In that succession. And I asked the coaching staff, who's the toughest player on the team? And they said, oh, it's Malachi. Yeah. We know every single time he steps on the court, practice or game, it's 100 miles an hour all the time. Here's Skogman. He's got a size advantage underneath. Gives up the dribble. Goes to Watson. Shot clock at three. It's good. That's a three-pointer for Watson. So here's Malachi Smith running the point. Kamara, Blakeney, they play catch along the perimeter. Also in the game for the first time is Kobe Brea, number four for Dayton. Well, that's their best three-point shooter. Yeah, he's off in the corner, covered by Lawyer. Kamara inside. He's playing the five. Tough shot. Ball knocked out of bounds by Unseal. No, 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 no. Yeah, it'll be Dayton basketball, excuse me, Davidson basketball. We talked about Desmond Watson being the X factor, and if he's knocking down shots like this, it could be a good night for Davidson. He's just a 25% three-point shooting team uh, player. So when he's knocking down threes like that, it opens up so many driving lanes, in particular for Foster Lawyer. Yeah, he's got six points to start, six of the eight for Davidson. 
The chair in for the first time. He's coming off the bench now after starting. Former CAA Rookie of the Year, William and Mary off the glass. He went right. knife into the basket. Dayton hasn't scored in more than three minutes. It's a 7-0 run for the Wildcats. Malachi Smith covered by Lawyer. Kamara. It's not just a tough shot. It's an elite shot. As you're going full speed downhill and then able to stop on a dime and spin. Bailey kept his pivot foot. Baseline jumper. That's a freshman right there. Long and lean to the basket. I know Reed Bailey, Reed Bailey is tough. He played at Brewster. For a fact, said he became a prospect uh, when he went from six foot eight to six foot eleven in a nine month span. I would have loved to have had that problem. Pretty Still good way problem. To get past five ten. <laughs> I want you to watch Kamara on this play. Watch him stop. Players that can decelerate as well, Tom, are so hard to guard. And really to use their athleticism like that. Watson keeping his pivot foot, just throws it up, no good. Kamara tips it into the hands of Malachi Smith. That ends a run of three straight makes for Davidson. Malachi, crossover, dishes to the corner. I'm sealed for three. There's the difference. Malachi knifed his way through the defense and then found a man in the corner. Great vision. Now the lead is one. Bailey cutting Kachara. He lost it. That was Malachi Smith who was the tag man and came up with that deflection and steal. Malachi out of the corner. Brea kicks it to Amsil. Obviously, led to the paint. Look how the offense is flowing, though, with Malachi Smith in there. There's a different feel to the offense in the half court when Smith is running point. I will say that he doesn't look like he's bothered at all no, by the not at all. I think he's anxious to show that he could play for some minutes as well. well conditioning is a factor for him. He looks healthy. The chair, that's a tough one, too. He just swept it under the arm of the defender. They're pretty high on him, the Davidson coaching staff. That's two buckets from, from him underneath the rim that have been high degree of difficulty. He's had 10 total points in the previous four games off the bench. They say they like him being on the second team because then he gets more reps in practice with the second team. Blakey, shot fake. Whistle blows, offensive foul. Back to back, huge plays for Cochera. He gets the bucket on one end, stands his ground. Dayton's sixth consecutive win in the series. You said it, Tom. They are doing a good job defensively. That's Davidson doing a good job defensively on Deron Holmes. Huge point of emphasis for the Wildcats this morning in shoot-around. We have to have tremendous ball pressure and make that post-entry pass as annoying as possible to try to deter some of those post-entry passes. 14 points for Davidson. 10 of those 14 are in the paint, so that kind of goes against what Anthony Grant wanted as the scouter report. Kuchera's three is no good. He wanted them to cut off the paint as much as they could. It has to be a huge point of emphasis cutting off the paint. You know they're going to come with tons of drives and screening action. Can't let them in the paint. Malachi Smith is on the bench. He was productive in his limited time out there. Holmes covered by Menenga. They doubled him a lot in the last meeting. Holmes very athletic, able to sweep in, not get the shot to go. And for Menenga, he didn't foul either. And that's the battle tonight. Menenga is a very adequate, more than adequate defender. Tough task guarding Holmes. Cochera down to the baseline. Blocked away. How about that one? Beautiful hands. I think that was Wukeji who was there. Brea for three. Yes! Tied up at 14. Huffman tried to answer it. He does. Goes right down the left side of the lane. He took a shot in the nose as well. That easily could have been an and one. He's trying to make sure he's not bleeding at all. 
This is A-10 basketball. Sure Tom is. McCarthy. I mean, yep. got to expect that. Under 10 to play here in the first half. Holmes got free. Ball knocked away. And it's going to wind up being Davidson basketball. So what are they doing against him, Deron Holmes, so well, far? Well, that last possession right there where the ball sails out of bounds is really good ball pressure. Right? They couldn't get a good passing angle. Holmes made a great cut to the rim, and he was open. But the ball pressure has it caused some hesitation. Fourth turnover, by the way, for Dayton. He could shoot that. Yeah, Skogman was open for three. No good. Ball knocked out of bounds. It's going to remain Davidson basketball. 9.37 to play here in the first half. And Davidson leads it by two. With Foster Lawyer taking the ball out of the bounds. They are going to find him as much as they can to come off a pin down. He's going to get a back screen. Here comes the down screen. Dayton guards it really well. Yeah, they knew it was coming. Yep. They worked on it to shoot around today. Snuffed it up. Skogman, 10 under the shot clock. Skogman into the paint. Skogman throws up a hook shot. Deadens off the side of the iron. That's Holmes' defense, though. We talk about his shot-blocking ability, but how many shots does he make you take that you don't practice? Mm. He causes a lot of SNPs, shots not practiced. <laughs> Working along the perimeters. We hit to the nine-minute mark here in the first half. Sharp drunks. Goes to the basket off the glass. Athletic for a, a freshman. He's the Mike Dunleavy of the Atlantic 10. I like Love that. his game. Point forward. Menega with his fifth rebound, and the putback is good. So 18-16, Davidson. Who well, spotlighted Menega in the open. He is a workman-like guy. On seal to the basket, throwing it up. No good. Rebound, Skogman. You know, they're getting into the paint with some of these shots. They're just not getting them to go down. But they're only getting one attempt. Yeah. A huge key for Davidson, boxing out and limiting them to the, just one shot. You can't give Deron Holmes opportunities to get second-chance shots after a shot goes up. Ball rolls out of bounds. I believe touched last by Menenga. Here's Sharp jumps on the drive. He's just got great touch. You never feel like he's sped up. He's a great finesse player. He gets the block on the other end. Menenga, tough finish, right place at the right time. He is your prototypical, right, hard hat, lunch pail player. Mm -hmm. Menenga and Lawyer both off the floor for Davidson. So Watson back in. It turns into the Huffman and Watson show on the offensive side for the Wildcats. When yeah. Those two guys are on the bench. Reed Bally also in. Sharp jumps. Gets to a cutting Brea. Pull up jumper. No good off the front of the rim. Holmes with the rebound though. There's that second shot, but he stepped out of bounds. Another turnover. That's number five for Dayton. Well, we've got a lot of action so far in this first half. Two-point lead for Davidson. Pong. You know, what Matt McKillop said to us today at shoot-around, he said he calls that pressure patient pressure. Yeah. You know, when his team goes full court. He said, I want them to make, make them feel us. The entire time we're on them defensively. A lot of times that patient pressure defense causes indecision or will have you speed up late in the shot clock. Imagine starting your offense with only 12 or 13 seconds on the shot clock, and then all of a sudden, oh, I have to get a shot up. That can cause some hesitation. Malachi Smith back in the game. No Kobe Elvis yet. We probably anticipated him playing less than Malachi. Yeah. Menenga trying to work against Holmes. Doesn't get the angle, but gets the rebound. Put back no good. Gets it again, and then pulls it back outside. Kuchar for three. There's some teamwork. Menenga staying with it because that was an unbelievable job by Holmes of walling up and contesting without fouling. That's seven rebounds for Menenga, and he got three of them on that spur right there. They might even give him one more on that. Well, if you look at the stats, Davidson winning the points in the paint battle, something that I did not expect coming into tonight. 12-8. In Hol favor of Davidson. Holmes in the paint. Holmes using his length. Can't get the finish to go. It's just been one of those first halves for him because the ball's gone in the cylinder and popped out. Huffman. Again, Davidson has Lawyer on the bench. Lawyer hasn't scored yet, and there's a kickball. 
This is the toughness of Menanga staying with it because you've got three Dayton defenders walling up trying to get a rebound kicks out for the three five offensive rebounds for Menanga tonight You Dayton see six overall. Hard time. Yeah, keeping Davidson out of the paint. 21-16, five-point lead for Davidson. Menanga fouled by Holmes on the floor. Menanga wanted a little continuation. That'll be the second one on Holmes. 16 foul. So he'll check out. Obviously, will check back in. Even though Menanga hasn't scored. I mean, that the battle's been pretty even between Menanga and Holmes tonight. Here's lawyer to inbound. Mike said before, when he inbounds, they try to get him a shot. Back screen, down screen. Here it comes. Oh, they had him. He thought about taking it, but then there was a hand in his face. Kamara cuts him off. Shot clock under 10. Watson, shot clock at five. Watson heads toward the basket. Got some space. Switched hands. Uh, this is the largest lead so far in the first half for Davidson. Another 7-0 run. It's the second 7-0 run that they've had in this first half. Brea looking in. Good help by a lawyer on the weak side tag, preventing that post-entry pass. Um, seal doesn't hand it off. He's fouled. A lot of times any coach will tell you the best way to beat pressure is with more pressure. That is pivot foot per perfection from Watson. He establishes his pivot foot, turns his body, gives himself a better angle with his off hand. Tough finish by Watson. Pivot foot perfection. How about that? That's good. I don't know if we can say it ten times fast, but that's I, I good. I can't. I'm, I'm not smart enough to do that. <laughs> you know that, Tom. I'm sealed for three, and he's fouled. Count the bucket. It's a four-point play. Oh, man. I'm sealed. Sold that beautifully, and the technique was awesome. I'm sealed's a really good talent, as that is a great job by Smith, who turns down a contested three to get a better look for I'm sealed. Shoots 35% from three, absolutely rips it from the right wing. Yeah, Dayton now three for three from beyond the arc. Amsiel has eight. He'll go to the free throw line, 77%. He's so important to this Dayton team. When Dayton wins, he gets about 12 points per, per game. When Dayton loses, he averages six. Mm. X factor for the Flyers. Foster Lawyer does not have a point yet. He missed there. And this 7-0 run is now a 4-0 run for Dayton. Charve jumps on the floor with Malachi Smith, which is what they would envision down the road. They're a little discombobulated on this possession. Not running their continuity like they should. Kamara to the basket. He got a nice bounce off the back of the iron. You may not need continuity when you got Kamara. Here's Skogman with the long catch. Triple teamed, and he passed it right into the hands of the Flyers. Kamara to a cutting Blakeney. Makes a great drive. Two back-to-back -back great plays by Kamara. Love the reactions. Look at uh, Malachi Smith's reaction. Of course, Blakeney's reaction. How, how much does Davidson have to get Foster Lawyer going? Oh, they have to. He's scoreless right now. He's one of the best scorers coming off screens in the country. He gets it back to Skogman. Kicks it to Menenga for three. And Menenga can't get it to go. Sharp joints with the rebound. One point lead for the Flyers. Out of bounds. Off the hands of Malachi Smith, who was cutting while the pass was going away from him. A little bit of a chemistry issue. Smith just comes back. The first team hasn't played with Smith. I'm talking about the in practice, the, first, the starting five typically has not played with Smith consistently enough. Kind of expected maybe one, of those, one or two of those plays. Boyer kicks nice it pass. out to Benanga. You have to chase lawyer everywhere. You can't fall in love with the fact that you've held him scoreless. He's going to keep moving. 
And Huffman is fouled. Count the buckets. Well, that's what Huffman likes to do. He likes to get into the paint and grind it out. That's, that's his game. Huffman is in the Elite Eight. And that was kind of a Cinderella, a Cinderella run for Dayton back in 2014. Well, he's a terrific head coach. And that, you know, we talked about how awesome the atmosphere is here at UD Arena. The Ryan Center is very underrated up oh, yeah, there in Rhode Island. It's a beautiful arena. It's a great setup. I'm sure that place will be rocking. All right, Huffman to the free throw line, 62%. And he does not connect on seal with the rebound. That's the next evolution of his game, Tom. You and I talked about it earlier. Huffman is terrific at getting into the paint off the bounce. But he needs to be more consistent at the free throw line and the three-point line to elevate his game. Char jumps for three. No good. And Skogman with the rebound. Here's Watson. Watson wide open right to the basket. He didn't know whether he should jam it, lay it up, or just roll it in. He's really good. Hey, he's been really good tonight. Uh, that's 10 points for Watson. Been crazy efficient in this first half. Just turns the corner, and that is a wide open. You know what? You know what's going to be on the film session tomorrow for Coach Anthony Grant? <laughs> that play right there, guaranteed. And with three guys going with their hands out, what's going on here? Yeah, Coach Grant's going to turn around, put his hands up, and say, "Hey guys, what did happen right there?" Three minutes left to play here in the first half. Pretty entertaining. Three-point lead for Davidson. Shot clock's down to five. Kamara finally realizes, lets it go. No good. And Huffman with the rebound. Lawyer, lawyer lurking in the corner. Coach Grant's calling for the offensive foul that lawyer's initiating contact before the screen comes. Something to watch out for. Lawyer picked up on a double team, spinning toward the basket, throws it up, shot block, picked up by Menenga, and he lays it in. Lawyer draws so much attention that everybody's trying to get the block that Menenga comes up and cleans up the mess. At the half. All right, so some of the news and notes. 11-ranked teams lost on Saturday. It was unbelievable watching one team go down after another. And, and it's the year of mid-major basketball, Tom McCarthy. FAU making history. First time ranked in the top 25. Charleston looks incredible. They look like a potential Sweet 16 team. Mm. But you need to pay attention to Florida Atlantic. Dusty May is in the conversation for National Coach of the Year. Their net ranking is 12 right now. They got two quad one wins. Boca. And Morty Seinfeld getting it done. Bounce out. <laughs> Shot clock is at five. The three is no good. Fresh 20 now for the Flyers. Kamara gave up his dribble. Fights his way through and just hooks it in. His patience in the post is just off the charts. It's exhausting to play, play against those two guys, both Kamara and Holmes. They're never sped up around the rim, ever. Kamara has eight points. Here's Lawyer. Lawyer's open for three and still scoreless. He's 0 for 5 now from the floor and 0 for 3 from beyond the arc. Again, 16 points away from 1,000 for his career. Team captain at Michigan State. Didn't play a whole lot, though. But he's played a whole lot these last two years for Davidson. To the corner. Three from the corner is good. Sharif Jones gets it to go. Ties it at 29. For a freshman, he has an understated calmness about him. Coaching staff loves his tempo when he has the basketball. Shoot, pass, drive, all three. And Lawyer still scoreless, but Watson gets the rebound. Lawyer looks up at the shot clock. He's uh, a coach on the floor. There's no doubt about that. Coach McKillop is screaming to move the ball. Stop sticking the basketball. Watson sticking a three. My goodness, how good has he been in this first half? 13 points in this first half. Shot clock is off. Game clock is at 15. Game clock down under 10. Moving screen at the top of the key. Now to five. 
Kamara for three at the horn. No good. Huffman with the rebound. He'll check it up. Oh, wow. That may have been good if it went. <laughs> that was really close to going in from Huffman. It looked like it picked up velocity as it went across. That's the end of the first half. After the break, time for the future of this day and season. All right, with that, let's take a look at the first half stats brought to you by National Car Rental. What jumps out, Mike? Well, obviously, we talked about it before. Eight offensive rebounds for Davidson. You would have thought that would have been the other way around. 13 second chance points, 22 points in the paint. Those three stats are the big ones that must get corrected for Dayton. They have to box out and stay more locked in and push Davidson away from the paint area. Averaging 16 points per game. Foster Lawyer has been held scoreless in this ball game. He's done some good things, but he hasn't gotten the ball in the bucket at all for six from the floor. A sign of a good thing and a good team for the uh, uh, next couple games for Davidson is when your best player goes scoreless, you have other guys that step up. Desmond Watson in particular, the sophomore, he had 13 points in the first half. He was tremendous. All right, so here we go. We begin the second half. The second time these two teams have faced each other in 18 days. Dayton won the last time. Davidson leads this one by three. Dayton with the basketball to start this second half on seal. Blakeney had two fouls in the first half. He goes up, hits the backboard, no good. And unfortunately for Reed Bailey, he got the rebound and then was out of bounds when he caught it. The shot clock will not reset. They're not saying there was a change of possession. So it sits at 11. This is their line play where they're going to look to go inside to Holmes. Yeah, he really hasn't gotten going either. He only has two points. Well, he's going to spin and post here. Shot clock is down to four. Um, seal backs his way in, turns and hooks it over Desmond Watson. That's good body control and understanding where he was on the floor. 11 points for Amseal, and we've seen him do it from the three-point line and now at the rim. Really good game so far for Amseal. Huffman gave up the three. Watson along the wing. Here's Lawyer curling. Again, Blakey with good defense. He always plays the best perimeter offensive player. Menenga fights his way in, and he goes down hard, and he is slow to get up. He landed on his elbow. Let's hope it's just the funny bone. He's going to have to check out. Well, live, it looked like there wasn't a ton of contact. It's when he fell to the floor, so he took a really awkward fall down on his left arm. Yeah, he doesn't want to go out of this ball game. Watch it again here. That should have been a foul right away. Should have been a foul on the floor, and he just takes a tough fall to the deck. You can see he's he's holding his left arm. Yeah, so the athletic trainer will take a look at him just to make sure it's okay. Minute into the second half. Menenga, a huge factor, not from the scoring standpoint, but he's been really good defending Holmes one-on-one. -on -one. Holmes only has two points, averages almost 20. Yeah, he has six points and nine rebounds, Menenga does. Athletic move by Kamara to go along the baseline and lay it in. He's got 10. From a scatter report standpoint, how exhausting it is, the fact that, hey, we did a great job on Holmes, but oh, by the way, we right. a player in a Kamara who may be just a share lower in terms of talent than Holmes. Now there's Blakeney with the steal into the open floor, heading to the rim. One point lead for Dayton. Blakeney's one of the best defenders in the Atlantic 10. He held Ace Baldwin in just six points the other day for VCU. Skogman looking. Bailey. Spin move, working against Kamara. He's caught in some traffic. Tries to reverse his field, and Kamara swats it away. And it's saved along the baseline. Jarv Jones was able to pick it up. And here he comes up the floor, left side of the lane. Fader, good! A little gentle kiss off the glass. Momentum can be a brutal thing at UD Arena. This is one of the smartest and loudest fan bases I have ever been around. This is awesome. And it's a three-point game. Dayton's on top, and that ball out of bounds off the Flyers. That's a good call. Here's the defense for Blakeney. You said it, Tom. He's one of the best defenders in the Atlantic 10. He also held Tyler Burton at just three points. 
And then Sharp jumps. That's the second fadeaway tough bucket he's made tonight. It's just so smooth, right? He can elevate mm -hmm. over smaller guards. Seven turnovers for Davidson. Eight points for Dayton off those turnovers. Bailey thought about it. Looks in for Menangos. Back in. Shot clock at five. Shot clock's at four. Watson a little crossover. Shot clock's oh, at two. Wow. Watson lost it. Blakeney got his hand on it. And that's another turnover. That's three excellent possessions individually for Blakeney. The steal, the deflection, the dunk. And Lawyer's going to check out. Kuchera's going to check in. Again, he came in 16 points from 1,000. He's scoreless tonight. So much of that has been Blakeney tonight. He's been fantastic on one of the best scores in the Atlantic 10, Foster Lawyer. Sharp Jones looking in. He's has been called for it. Yes, he wants it. And he tried to get a better angle to get to him. He's in the paint, forces his way up off the glass. That's an 8-0 run for the Flyers. And now the lead is up to five. They got the switch that they wanted. Menenga wasn't guarding Holmes on that play. And Hoffman has it swatted away by Holmes. That's six blocks for Dayton. Watch the patience of Holmes. And this is the switch that they wanted. Menenga got caught up on Kamara and was unable to guard Holmes. And this is what he does. Blocking shots without fouling. He is such a high IQ defender. Foster Lawyer checks back in. He's going to initiate this inbounds. DHO, here it comes. <laughs> Blakeney got a hand on it, so it slowed him up a little bit. Menenga working against Blakeney. The help by Holmes, too strong. And an empty possession again for the Wildcats. Gamara open for three. Got it! You and I talked about it at halftime right off air. We said, I bet Coach Anthony Grant said a few choice words to his team to get him fired up. They have responded. What did he say today at practice? Listen, we're going 50%, but I need 100% attention. Well, I think he's got their attention now. 100% execution. Yeah. Here's Lawyer. He has to get going. Has to. Menenga with some help. Shot clock's down to five. Shot clock's at three. Skogman, shot clock at one. Stolen away by Kamara. And now Dayton on an 11-0 run. Trying again. Whistle blows and a foul on Skogman. It's starting to teeter heavily to the side of the Flyers. Quotes have actually affected change in a huge way, but I think one of my favorite quotes of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. for me, let no man pull you low enough to hate him. Mm. I love that so much and do my absolute best to embody that as often as I can. Well, that's, that's one of those statements that is uh, resounding even today. No question. Maybe even more so. All right, so a timeout called by... The media time, or we hit the media timeout after that big three. Now Dayton with an eight-point lead on a roll here. They're picking on Foster yeah. Lawyer. Size advantage. Out the bucket. Oh, man. They ran that play specifically to get Sharp Johns in the post-up scenario. This was designed specifically for this reason. Empty side, ISO, let Sharp Johns go to work. He's had a nice game. He's got seven points to go along with four assists. Excuse me, nine points to go along with four assists and four rebounds. The freshman from Mongolia. Zero turnovers. Yep, which is important for him because he's running the point a lot. His dad was seven feet tall. His dad played for the Harlem Globetrotters. The Shark was his nickname. It's going to be pretty good to have a nickname The Shark. <laughs> got to be pretty funny, too, to play for the Globetrotters. That's right. Five minutes into the second half. Lawyer up top for Menenga. Shot clock down to seven. Menenga's runner blocked away by Kamara. 
Another block shot. That's seven for Dayton. Holmes wants it down low. He wants somebody to get him the basketball. Benanga is doing a really good job pushing him off of his comfort zone. Kamara pull up jumper, no good. And Menenga has uh, double digits and rebounds with that one. Ten point lead for Dayton, largest of the night. Menenga quickly to Kachera. Watson was open for second cutting. Sometimes when you're down by this much, you get hesitant and conservative with some of your passes. Menenga off the glass and he ends that run. The drought was four minutes and 40 seconds for the Wildcats. Menenga wants to go left. He baited Holmes just enough to get that spin towards his strong hand. Eight points, ten rebounds. Tom Seal. Holmes again wants it. They go to the corner though. Sharp jumps. No. And Kuchera with the rebound. And Lawyer crossover. That's a beauty. Up off the glass. Oh, count the bucket. He'll finally go to the free throw line. Nope, they're going offensive foul. Not bad. That was a big time crossover in semi transition by really Foster was. Lawyer. He gets downhill. He's got great touch. And his left foot is actually on the restricted circle. That should not have been a charge. I, that, that is what I saw from here. So he was in, that was Kamara. He, Kamara was in really good position. Great position, legally. But his foot was actually on the restricted circle. Referees missed that. Well, it's an eight-point lead for Dayton. You know, but that's the first time that Foster Lawyer has seen the ball go through the hoop. Maybe that opens and it up a little bit. that's one of those things. He's that kind of shooter to where if you see it once, even if it didn't count, guy can get hot quick. When there is a scoring drop for a guy that scores like him, what is the key for him? To, is there a certain shot he tries to find? No, always take the next great shot available. You'll never find him taking bad shots. You, great scores and shooters, just take the next great shot available. Here's Meninga off the glass again. Forced his way through the action. And now a two-possession game, 44-38. Tomorrow. And a turnover forced by the Wildcats. Huffman's assessing a little bit. Swoban wanted it. Huffman for three. Not necessarily his game. He's been cool from beyond the arc this year. You said it. He likes to drive. The ball does not come off his, his hand very clean. He's got a very odd energy transfer when he releases the basketball. And it's something that he has to work on. And, he's, he, he, and he has worked on it too, right. right? Yep. 12.20 to play, second half. Shot clock down to two. Kamara high stepping into the basket, high off the glass, no good. Holmes with the rebound. And he's double teamed immediately. Extra pass for Malachi Smith into the paint. Malachi Smith's first bucket. He means a lot to this team if he's 100% healthy. Back tonight after 11 games out. And Menenga to the basket. And an offensive foul is called on Menenga. Mm. It's a really good half game ahead of BCU in the Atlantic 10 and also St. Louis. Meanwhile, for Davidson, they've lost three straight games. So two and four right now in the Atlantic 10. I don't think anybody pictured that when they laid it out. They were picked sixth. Loyola Chicago in its inaugural year in the Atlantic 10. Off to a rough start. Lost to St. Joseph's this past weekend. It's a fight for the top three right now between Dayton, VCU, and St. Louis. I think those are the three clear-cut best teams. I think the kind of sleeper team right now in the Atlantic 10 is Richmond. Tyler Burton's been playing out of his mind, potential pro. The Spiders are good. Mm. Dayton with the basketball. Zone for Dave Davidson right now. Here's Bray in for the first time this half. His pull-up jumper is good. He got some space. It's the next evolution of his game. He's known as a three-point sniper. Doesn't often put it on the deck to drive. 
That's back to a 10 point game. And Lawyer has that cut off by Malachi Smith, but they're going to call it a kickball, I believe. Yep. Smith is moving really well. He is really well. That's a great sign for the Flyers. We, I haven't really noticed a significant drop off in this game. A lot of times when the guys come back from injury that quickly, excuse me, after that amount of time, it takes a while before they can quickly get themselves back in the rhythm. But I think Malachi Smith has looked really solid tonight. Yeah, we, we knew we'd see him tonight. We thought we might see Kobe Elvis tonight, but he hasn't played. Three is no good. Rebound by Dayton. And here is Malachi, number 11, out for the last 11 games. Gets it to Omsiel. That is an aggressive move along the baseline. But he finishes with the left hand, his offhand. My goodness. Largest lead for Dayton, playing in front of his mom for the second straight game. His mom had never seen him play college basketball. His brother was in town for a tournament. Put to the 38. Here's Kamara. Double teamed immediately. Lost control. Picked up by Watson. By Watson, three on two. Watson, nice snake to the basket. Blocked from behind by Kamara. And a foul on Menenga. That's eight blocks now for the Flyers. Here's Amstiel. Check out the finish with the left hand. He has to because he jumps off the wrong foot. And here's the block by Kamara, who's one of the best shot blockers in the Atlantic 10. He's positioned himself, even though we've talked a lot about Deron Holmes, nationally potential Atlantic 10 player of the year. But Tumari, Tum, Tumani Kamara might end up being defensive player of the year in the Atlantic 10. He's one of the best rebounders in the country, big time shot blocker. Then he can guard a shooting guard. I mean, it's multifaceted defender. How about this half? Dayton has outscored Davidson 21 to 6 in this half. Brea gave up his dribble. That's going to be a backcourt violation. And then Malachi eventually picks it up. 9.57 to play here in the second half. Anthony Grant in his sixth season here at Dayton. Kamara's limping. So pay attention to this sideline out of bounds action for Davidson. We'll run a lot of different action off of sideline out of bounds. Most teams just try to get it in. And there goes, you see Lawyer, he's low. He's coming back up. Look at the attention he commands. Good help by Holmes. Another good help. Back-to-back -back great defensive help performances mm. by Deron Holmes. And he closes out on the three. Shot clock's at one. Huffman has it blocked away. It's going to be Dayton basketball. So another block. That's nine for the Flyers. None for Davidson. Bray is three. No good. Right, now Foster Lawyer with an easy rebound. Huffman in the paint. I think that's another block. I think they got a piece of it as Malachi Smith stumbled out of bounds. Make sure to watch Deron Holmes right at the bottom of your screen, right here, and just follow him. Watch everything that he does on this possession. He's in perfect position. He keeps his head on a swivel, steps up, walls up the defense for the double team. Then he closes out for the three-point shot, gets a hand up, and then he gets a another hand up to contest <laughs> that. That's put that on the Hall of Fame help defensive plaque. My goodness. Watson for three off the inbounds. It's no good. Whistle blows and a foul underneath. It's going to go against Dayton. That'll be Holmes who's called for that one. That's number uh, three on him. And by the way, that's the first foul on Dayton for this half if you're keeping score. Well, Tom, there's a great quote. The harder you play, the less you foul. <laughs> Much think about it. every time you foul. What does that mean? Usually means you're late and you're out of position You're not paying attention to the scanner report That's gonna go against Blakeney a push I think lawyer would have liked uh, them to just play on on that one because he finally had an open three That's three on Blakeney 
Blakeney's done such a great job on Foster Lawyer. If I was Foster Lawyer, I'm probably thinking he's got three fouls. I'd like to attack here. Down screen or up screen into a down screen for Lawyer. And, and Lawyer finally cans a jumper. Whew. Ten point game. First bucket of the night after seven misses. Okay, he came in 16 away from a thousand for his career, which getting to a thousand has taken yeoman's work these last two years. Freshman Sean Logan playing against Holmes. And Holmes curls. I think that's a curl, right? Yep. I think that's a good call. I mean, it's a good call as well. Here's Foster Lawyer right at the bottom of your screen, setting this screen. A great frame of re reference if you're a defending lawyer. When a shooter is low, he's coming up for his flow. Foster Lawyer doesn't want to be underneath the basket. He is not going to post up. If he's low, chances are he's either coming up for a screen or he's setting a back screen. Well, by the way, Deron Holmes called for that hook. That's his fourth foul. Here's Lawyer, thought about the long-range three. To Watson. Watson in the paint, forces the action. Wow, he really was able to force his way in. Watson had been really quiet. 15. That's his first bucket in the second half. Had 13 in the first half. Eight minutes to play. Eight-point game. Tom Seal. Throws it up, off the glass, it's good. Boy, he is ultra smooth, Tom. I mean, ultra smooth in every facet of his game. Yeah, I think Davidson, and even myself, I think they thought there was going to be a pass instead of just a shot. Lawyer for three. Got uh -oh. it. Uh-oh. Yeah. Five points for Foster Lawyer. We got a game now. After Lawyer hits that kind of three... 52-45, 11 away from a thousand form. Dayton slowing it down a little bit here. Well, this is their tempo. Yeah, they love they the sets. Teams. They're 339th in the country in yep. tempo because they get plays like that. They designed a play to pick on Foster Lawyer and go to Blakeney in the post. Skogman for three. He got it to go. 54-48. So they trade two for the three with 6.45 to play. The last couple possessions, effective field goal percentage, a little bit better for Davidson because they're shooting more threes. I'm going to give you a little ch a chance to give us a synopsis on effective field goal percentage in a moment. Another turnover forced and then picked up back by Dayton. Here's Amseal over the basket to outside for Brea. Look at all his passing. Kamara for three. No good. Amseal tips it out. 20 on the shot clock. Coach McKillop imploring his guys to stay with it. Stay with it. Amseal for three. Short. Watson's got it. Again, Menning is on the bench with three fouls. Watson tries to kick it to the corner. He does for Huffman for three. No good. We said that's not, not, necessarily, shot. not necessarily his game. He did have opening, though, to, to set himself and go. Well, I knew it was not the shot because Coach McKillop puts two hands on the back of his head and said, <laughs> no, you can't do that. Get it to the shooter. Timeout on the floor. 54-48, you're watching college. From a point standpoint, or from a rhythm standpoint, effective field goal percentage is essentially a stat that adjusts for the fact that the three-point field goal is worth one more point than a two-point field goal. And analytics guys love it, but coaches like it too because that means you're taking good shots. Mm. Could be the most important stat in the modern game I like that. today. I like that. Well, here we go, 5.49 to play. Along with Mike O'Donnell, I'm Tom McCarthy. 54-48 to score. Davidson had the lead at the half. But then a 21-6 start for Dayton gave them the lead. But it's been a little different story recently. No one passed oh, down low, Blakeney. You know, he said that might be open today. Anthony Grant said that might be open today. 
Here's Lawyer. He's got five in the last few minutes. Along the baseline, Lawyer tries to throw it up. He does. What? He's got seven. How did that go in? I don't know. I looked immediately over at the Dayton bench, and assistant coach Ricardo Greer said, what just, how did he make that? And by the way, it's his scout today, so he's got to be happy with some of the adjustments that they've made as the game's got on. No question about it. Steal by Huffman. Snaking his way toward the basket, drawing contact. Nothing was called. Scopin with the rebound, and he'll go to the free throw line. This is a great pass by Charles Joms, and really Watson just completely lost sight of Blakeney. They thought that was open, and this is just a Harlem Globetrotter circus ridiculous shot. There's no way I could ever make that if my life depended on it. Kind of bucket from Foster Lawyer. Well, Skogman goes to the free throw line, 88%. Connects on the first one. Davidson top 100 in the country from the free throw line. Dayton, meanwhile, 246. The Skogman cans both. How about this? It's a four-point game. Blakeney has four fouls. Keep an eye on that. Holmes, he's in foul trouble also. It's a 14-6 run by the Wildcats. Started with their defense, and then all of a sudden, Foster Lawyer started to get going. It's fool's gold if you think, hey, we did a pretty good job on him in the first half. It's too good of a player. You can't let up. This is a good defensive possession for the Wildcats. Yeah, shot clock down to five. Huffman with the steal. That's two back-to-back -back steals for Huffman. 13th turnover for the Flyers. Lawyer for three. No good off the front of the rim. Well, that was filthy ball screen reject. Individual action from Foster Lawyer. I'm actually shocked that didn't go down. Yeah, it was trending yep. in the other way. Yep. Brea wide open underneath, and he can't get the layup to go down. How about that little bunny he couldn't get to go? Lawyer skips it. Watson open for three. Too strong. So back-to-back -back missed threes for Davidson. Those are both tired misses by both teams. Here's Brea. That's his shot. Yep. That's he knew it. Shot. He knew it, too. The ball fake dribble to the left is Brea's shot. Skogman has it stolen away by Blakeney. 59-52. Anthony Grant, they have a lot of set plays, and he's barking one out right now. It's part of their offensive tempo is with their backcourt being out for the majority of the season due to injury, they had to run a set play almost every single time down the court, and they're trying to pick on Lawyer again in the uh, post. On seal for three. He's fouled by Skogman, though. And he's going to get three free throws, and he's a good free throw shooter when we come back. 2.54 to play here in the second half. Matt McKillop, who uh, took over for his dad, Bob, uh, who was unbelievable for 33 years. Phenomenal person, too. Uh, he was not happy about that foul to force Unseal to the free throw line for three shots here. Uh, the jacket was half ripped off and then put back yeah. on very graciously. So Obseal's first is good. Again, he's 77% from the free throw line for the season. And uh, four for four tonight. Make that one. Michael Donald, how good of a free throw shooter were you? I was I was okay. I only cared about wins and losses. I didn't care about free throw percentage. Oh, so 65%? That's a little bit better than that. <laughs> wow, I've never been kidney punched that hard in a broadcast before in my life. How dare you, sir? I was at least 67. Uh, Ten point game, 62-52. He made all three. <laughs> That's a tough one when you make all three like that. Lawyers curling. Nothing there. They go inside for Meninga. Um, Steele's got him. A little help from Holmes. Meninga, turn around off the glass. Count wow. the bucket to the free throw line. How quick was that spin? Right off the bounce? That's hard to guard. That's not a normal post play. Watch how quickly he bounces and then goes right up. That's not normal. Post players don't do that. They usually like to catch, gather after the bounce. That's a big-time move by Meninga. This is his fourth double-double of the year. So he's 60% for the free throw line. It's his first trip tonight. 
Sharp jumps, checks back in. Meninga, three-point play good. Pinballs around. Skogman is out. Reed Bailey, the freshman, is back in. It's interesting on that play, too. Holmes was not guarding Menanga. Don't forget, Holmes has four fouls. Mm -hmm. This is Dayton basketball. Slow it down. They're going to run a set. There's going to be multiple looks at the rim here. I thought about this, too, that if they wanted Malachi Smith to play, this would be the time to get him in. No question. So he is in. Shot clock is at three. Kamara with the shot clock at two. Kamara, did he get it off? I don't think did he, he got get it off. off. They're going to hold up and check. Yeah. I don't think he got it off. Brett Hampton is going to take a look at it. We're at 2.06 to play here in the second half. No question, it was close. Well, I need to slow my expectations down. <laughs> it is exceeding my expectations. The atmosphere here has been off the charts. And it's consistent. It's every single yeah. game. All right, so they take the points off the board. Seven-point game. Still plenty of time left in this ball game. Full court pressure for, uh, uh, for Dayton here as well. They get it to Lawyer. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to attack Holmes here, knowing that he's got four fouls. Foster Lur is going to come back up. Skogman for three. And a little too much. Watson's put back. Does got enough torque on it. That was a good look for Skogman. He's capable of knocking that three down. Nobody for Dayton boxed out Watson on the weak side. That's 13 offensive rebounds now for the Wildcats. And a timeout called by Dayton. 17 second chance points for Davidson. We'll be back. We've got a tight game. Stay with us. Time. It's amazing when you take good shots how much that puts you in position to get offensive rebounds. And Davidson has been terrific on the offensive glass. 13 mm. offensive rebounds for the Wildcats, the undersized Wildcats. Well, they get it into Holmes, who's trying to find a guard to get the basketball to. Lawyers face guarding Malachi Smith. Whistle blows. That'll be a foul called on the Wildcats. It'll go against Lawyer. And Lawyer wasn't trying to foul there. That was a incidental trip by Lawyer. It's the right call, but this is an incidental trip. You see Lawyer just trying to guard without fouling. Tomorrow trip, you have to call that. That's an automatic, as frustrating as it might be for Davidson fans, it's an automatic call if an offensive player is dribble motion, trips over defender's foot, they're going to call it every time. So Kamara goes to the free throw line. It's a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. And he connects. Foster Lawyer is not happy with himself right now. He just slammed his leg no, it, with his hand. No, it's not about the call. He knows he made a mistake and he got too close. Kamara's been just excellent tonight. That's by the way, both points. yeah, and by the way, both teams over 80 percent from the free throw line. Dayton's now eight of nine. It's a good sign. Dayton isn't a score political free throw shooting team. Davidson is. That's a good sign for Dayton. Here's Lawyer off the curl. Wanted it. Good yes. chase. Really good chase by Blakeney. Oh, what a pass behind the back. Stogman running to the basket. Layup is no good. Put back by Menenga is a tad lucky. And a timeout call by Davidson. Just keep your hands moving. Is this great or what? This is Atlantic 10 basketball right now. Don't as the possession arrow belongs to uh, the Davidson Wildcats. You see the two stars tonight. Not really much going offensively for either one. They've combined for 11 points. And Foster Lawyers, 3 for 11 from the field. Deron Holmes has only taken four total shots. And here's the thing. So Davidson fouls there. That's Bailey who fouls Malachi Smith who goes to the free throw line. I think that's a I don't if there was anybody else I don't think they were gonna foul I, I think that was really smart by coach McKillop of trying to find Malachi Smith who is historically a good free throw shooter however this is the first time he's been in this situation in a long time first game back for missing multiple games he's been 11 games out two points first trip to the line front end of the one and one is good he's got three 
been pretty calm tonight. I, I mean, I've been really impressed with how calm, under control. You never felt like he was too sped up. Second shot. Nothing but that. Five assists, only one turnover for Malachi Smith. Fans are coming to their feet. Skogman for three, no good. Huffman tips it out. Holmes with the rebound, and Skogman fouls him. And this is what Davidson's going to have to do after each miss now. They're going to have to foul because they're running out of yeah. clock. And initially, if you're watching the game on TV and you're looking up stat lines, you're saying, hey, that's the right guy to foul. Deron Holmes only shoots 68% from the free throw line on the season. But in Atlanta 10 play, he's 81%. Mm. He's been crazy good from the free throw line in conference play. All right, so Holmes to the line. It is one and one. See his numbers, 19.4 for the year, just four tonight. And he missed. The ball's tipped out, though. Touched last by Dayton. And it'll be Davidson basketball. Seven-point deficit, 44 seconds left to play. Depending on the team that you're actually that you actually have, you're either taking a three or a two. And the reason why I say that is with Davidson, you've gotten multiple three-point shooters on the floor, but you need to know where Foster Lawyer is at all times. We're getting him on the rescreen. Skogman forgot to screen. He sure they did. Huffman tries to force it in. Skogman has it. Yeah, you got to take three now. And Watson's three, no good. Blakeney with the rebound off the hands of Menenga. Look at this, and Menenga. To the job by Menenga. Let me see if he was in the act of shooting, though. Nope, it's not. So it's going to be an inbounds because it's only the 16 foul. Watch Menenga at the bottom. Watch him throw his hands up. That's a good acting job by Menenga, regardless if it was a foul or not. Coach Grant, not happy. So that foul is on Blakeney, so he's done. That's five on him. He was terrific all night long on Foster Lawyer. So Dayton does have some uh, foul trouble. With Blakeney out now, Holmes has four. You see the four players with three for Davidson. And who's inbounding the basketball for Davidson? That depends on what's probably going to happen. You see Foster Lawyer right in the middle of the paint. Guess what? He's not going to stay there. He's going to get a screen. Had him on the floor. Oh, he was open, yeah. Was wide open. Watson gets the two and a timeout. Last one called by Davidson. Five point game, 66 61, 23.9 to play. We'll have some more foul shots, I'm sure, when we. You know, they're off the clock compared to Friday. Those are, that's a big deal. It is a big deal, but you know that Davidson still has the ability to go for a quick steal first before they try to foul. Now, Holmes is one of the guys you'd probably like to foul right away. Ball is loose, and there's the foul on Unseal. Lawyer's going to pick up his fourth. Boy, they almost got the turnover, too. Really close. So 10 fouls. So that means Unseal will have two free throws. He makes both of them. The task is more daunting for Davidson. But now, if he just makes this one, it's a two-possession game still. And if you're making the second one, don't be surprised if you saw some token full-court pressure from Dayton to try to, you know, you want to deter Foster Lawyer from just getting it and going and getting it across half-court as quick as he can. Second shot is good. There's the full-court pressure that Mike talked about. And it has to be a three here. It has to be. And it's got to be quick, too. Menenga. Pass. Oh, behind his back with a bounce pass for Watson. Watson for three. It's blocked. I'm seal with the block. That's going to just about do it. Skogman fouls Holmes. The block party has been a huge story because it's been crowded tonight. Ten for the Dayton Flyers, including that one right there. The length and size of Dayton caused a ton of frustration around the paint area. The three-point line, it has been a shot-blocking clinic by the Dayton Flyers tonight. Well, Holmes will go to the line. 0 for 1 from the free-throw line. He'll get two. 
0 for 2. And look, a lot of things happen for Dayton tonight. So you, you think about Malachi Smith coming back. How would the offense look? How would the defense look with him getting back into rotation? Davidson did an unbelievable job forcing Holmes away from his comfortable position. Right? De mm. Deron Holmes struggled all night long. But it was other guys who stepped up. Kamara had 15 points. Omsiel was fantastic, had 19 points, hit a couple threes, seven of eight from the free throw line. Every game matters. No question about it. In the Atlantic 10, where you're a historic two-bit league, every single conference game is an absolute rock fight and matters come March. Bailey's long throw was cut off by Malachi Smith. Now the foul is on Watson. It's reminiscent of the George Mason game where Bailey's pass was cut off. Kamara is doing some um, renovating down to our right because he went into the scorer's table. All right, so Malachi Smith is going to the line. Foster Lawyer just told his guys to kind of back off a little bit here because there's only six seconds left. I've been really impressed with the backcourt of Dayton. Malachi Smith, five assists, only one turnover. Mike Sharp jumps, seven assists, zero turnovers. Dayton has 17 assists on 25 made mm. field goals. They were, especially in the second half, unselfish and consistently looking for the best available shot in the half court. Definite, uh, definitely a great second half adjustment on both ends of the floor for the Dayton Flyers. Two seconds left. Meninga lets it fly. No good. And the Dayton Flyers have swept out the Davidson Wildcats. They beat them for a second time in 18 days. This time at home, they win it by a final score of 68 to 60.